we're going to start. Um, close the door. Okay. So, uh, in this conference, we're going to present uh, our vision of the Joomla extension production process. Okay. Uh, I don't say it's the best way, but it's the way we use to create extension. Um, so uh, the main idea we are trying to do for e each extension uh, is not to, um, to give a complete extension for all needs uh, of, the, of the Joomla users, but uh, the main goal is to have user-friendly extension only. Uh, Okay, so uh, just a little presentation. I'm Tristan, here Xavier and Baudouin. Uh, this is my associate. We have a company which is Joomla United. We are creating uh, Joomla extension uh, since uh, one year now. And um, uh, <coughs> Chris Baudouin is the leading developer. So uh, in I will talk uh, in the first part um, for the, the extension creation, and uh, Baudouin will do the second part about the, about the security and more technical stuff. Um, so, uh, okay, <laughs> no, <laughs> roll back. Okay, our model uh, is to, um, we uh, have, uh, like, uh, now we have uh, seven developers uh, which are working on different extension uh, in with a partnership with uh, each one. Um, so uh, we are dealing with uh, um, user stuff and they are dealing with uh, code stuff, um, only code. Our goal is uh, that developer is only focused on the code. We are dealing with the commercial part, with the design part, with everything around the extension. Um, so, so, okay, um, this is the plan of the conference. So, um, in the first part, we're gonna present our, um, our way to uh, identify the, um, the problem of end user with most Joomla extension, uh, especially the part with, um, with user-friendly um, uh, user -friendly interface uh, problem. Uh, then in the second part, we're going to detail um, how we identify and create uh, a better solution, I hope. And uh, in the third part, the feasibility and the complexity of the extension. And uh, Baudouin will take the fourth part uh, about the bulletproof the extension by ensuring a good code quality. And uh, in uh, the last part, um, we're going to detail uh, how to get feedback uh, from uh, end user and uh, make the versioning of the extension. And uh, at the middle of them, there, is be, uh, there will be a video demonstration about uh, one of our extension. Um, that tries to uh, handle all this stuff inside. Okay, so um, the first part, identify the problem, the major problem for end user. Uh, we have a company also in uh, France that we are, and we are doing training session for end user. End user, I mean not webmaster, but uh, users that are um, really put the content on the website. Okay, I mean, create Joomla article, add image on the website, and some stuff like that. Never install an extension. They don't know how to install an extension. They don't have access to anything in uh, Joomla core. Um, so uh, during the training station, uh, session, we are trying to um, uh, look at the habits and what user is really doing in front of a Joomla extension. I mean, when you want to add an image, uh, what is he doing? Is he going in the media manager? Uh, uh, did he prefer to <coughs> click on the, on the editor button of GCE or on the Joomla default ma image manager and some stuff like that? Um, then we try to identify the recurring tedious tasks. Um, 
and uh, taking trainees' opinion of what they were expecting. Uh, because, in fact, uh, end user uh, that open a Joomla article for the first time, uh, their reference is, uh, is not any CMS, anything like that. The reference is for file will be Dropbox, because they know Dropbox. Uh, or uh, at least they know their computer with managing folder, and for the images they know Facebook, they know Google Plus, and software and some uh, uh, so other social network uh, who uh, who offer them to create easily uh, some um, photo album. Um, so that will be our example during the presentation. Uh, is uh, our image manager we've created uh, inside Joomla to uh, create a photo album and manage, and manage single images. Okay, so um, getting the user feeling. Managing Joomla, uh, managing image and files uh, under Joomla is not any stuff for the end user. Uh, why is it so complex? Um, the, uh, when you install the first time Joomla, uh, you have a media manager. That's true. But it's far from being perfect. Um, for example, uh, the first point is not true with the last version of Joomla, but uh, when, you are, when you're going in the media manager, for example, to manage your image and your folder, um, it's uh, in the preview version you have to activate uh, an option in the parameters to be able to upload not a single image but even two or three images in the same time. Okay? It's far from uh, Facebook or Google Plus or uh, the habit of, of the user is to uh, take like five images, drag and drop inside the article and images are uploaded. You can add a title and some stuff like that. It's very slow and complex for him. Uh, it's complex too for the end user to uh, understand uh, what is the size, uh, what is the format of the image, and uh, the weight of the image. Okay, he don't even know the difference between a JPEG and a PNG file. That's the reality of the end user. Um, in the editor button um, of Joomla, uh, in the media, mm, the image button in the default uh, Joomla editor. Uh, doesn't allow you to create folder and uh, put image inside this folder and in fact uh, classify your, your um, images. Um, but if you're a good webmaster, you can install some third extension uh, to, uh, to uh, improve this stuff. So you have different options. Uh, you can... Um, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, you, you can... Tu peux passer la suivante. Okay, uh, so uh, the ideal solution for him. Uh, it's what I told just before, is to create album like in Facebook or manage file like in Dropbox. Uh, the main differences uh, we've identified is uh, he can use drag and drop, which is uh, very important and very easy for him like he's uh, managing image on his uh, desktop. Um, he can reorder with drag and drop visually images. He wants the first uh, image in the third place. Uh, he just drag on the third position. Um, he can edit images on this with a single click on it. Uh, when you're on Facebook or on Google Plus, uh, you can click on the image, uh, add the title, uh, modify the access, and uh, some stuff like that. Um, images are automatically resized uh, during the upload. Uh, when you drag an image, uh, you have uh, some stuff like uh, an uh, HTML5 uploader. Uh, the end user doesn't care about the weight of the image. He's taking his camera, he takes a picture, the picture is uh, 5 megabytes weight, and the image is still uploading, even if his connection is slow. Um, you can organize uh, album like on its uh, desktop, uh, change uh, 
the same like the image. Uh, you can change the order of all album. Uh, and it works with mobile device. If you are uh, using an iPad, you can uh, go and take photo from, uh, from, the, from your iPad. OK, so regarding that, we are studying the feasibility of the extension. So uh, in the center is the best solution. And it's very hard to, uh, to, to get this, this solution. Because the first that we have in front of us is the final user ideal solution. Uh, we also have uh, other solutions that uh, we've seen in other CMS, like WordPress. Uh, and there is solution that is already in Joomla. Like uh, you can install uh, some image manager. Uh, you can uh, uh, image manager. I mean components that is uh, that that allow you to create album and manage galleries. And you you have also some uh, image plugin. Uh, and there is also uh, another thing we have to consider is the integration with a third party service. I mean Dropbox. Maybe you uh, with an extension uh, user want to um, to get picture from Dropbox. Uh, and another stuff, which is more for developer, but is to consider the Joomla framework framework to have uh, something that is very <coughs> speed and very usable for end user. Okay. So. Uh, we're going to present uh, the solution we've built regarding all this stuff, uh, which is we've built two solutions, in fact, which are uh, the name of the extension are Dropix and Dropfile. Uh, this is our example. So um, we, we built an extension. We're going to show you a demo just after that, uh, which is you can do drag and drop with images. The user doesn't care about size or weight or of the image. You can reorder image between uh, between them. Um, you can design and apply themes uh, on image without technical uh, skill. Technical, I mean CSS. You can put a border. Um, you can put a shadow and some stuff like that. Uh, you can manage your album like on Facebook. Um, you can add ACL, especially for file. Um, uh, or category of, uh, of file by single click, um, and you can uh, and you have uh, also um, the all the all the um, all the category of file, for example, or, or photo albums that is uh, physically inside your article. That is uh, another problem we identify is that uh, for 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 example, when we install when you install uh, an image plugin, an image plugin, sorry. Um, you have in your Joomla article uh, some sort of tag with brackets, and uh, it's not user friendly because end user will ask, "Why I should I? Sh uh, where where do I find an ID of an album? What is an ID? Uh, why should I do a space? Uh, should I put a space between the ID and the name of the album? Some stuff like that." So. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's. Uh, uh, <laughs> we sorry, we have uh, we have prepared uh, before a local demonstration on the server, but uh, it's not working. So we're gonna show you a video. <laughs> okay, this is the video of uh, Dropix. Second, you can say Okay, so this is the image manager. Okay, so the idea is what I told you. The end user always stay in the article. You don't have to go in the component and go back in the article to, to, to take images and put them online. Okay, so you just drag and drop images, insert a gallery, he always stay in the article, he can save. Uh, just he saves the article, he goes on the front end, he refresh, and he has automatically resized the image with Lightbox. That's how uh, he creates a gallery. So if you want to edit a gallery, 
He can reorder images just with drag and drop. That's what I told you. OK. So then without any, um, any skills with CSS, he can apply easily a theme for on images. Like on the example, it's Polaroid theme. Or he can add a sideshow. OK. So he can edit images like it's the same or on, on Facebook. I don't remember, but on Google Plus it's the same. You can click on the image, add a title, uh, and the title is automatically, without saving the article, uh, add on the gallery. OK, so this is another theme. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, I have prepared a, 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 a more interactive presentation. Sorry for the video promotion. <laughs> so yeah, this is another theme. Uh, in fact, it's the same like uh, the photo album you have on Google Plus. If you, if you are using it, this is a. Uh, you know, a uh, responsive masonry sim. Maybe you heard about that. This is the responsive stuff. Uh, OK. This is nice. I like it. Great. <laughs> <laughs> OK. And you can also click on the images and manage a uh, single image visually and insert the image in the article. Yeah. <coughs> the, uh, as I told you in the beginning, uh, you cannot do all the stuff with images, but most of the user can manage simply images with this kind of stuff on the Joomla website today. Okay, so uh, we're gonna switch to the next part of the presentation uh, that will be done by uh, Baudouin, I told you, uh, our leading developer. Sorry. that working? Yes. Very good. Uh, so sorry for the length of the video. It uh, was very comprehensive because this is the kind of video we would uh, provide uh, to the people using the extension because people tend not to read the documentation. And we find it better to just give them a video and so they can see. Plus, it's pretty straightforward. So I'm here to talk to you a little bit more uh, uh, of the technical point of view of our, of our project. Basically, Tristan and Xavier would take care of all the specifications and I would try uh, not to code all the extensions by myself, uh, but to be uh, some sort of technical bridge between them and developers. So, as, um, so I'm going to present you basically how I try to do it, how I do it, and what infrastructure I'm trying to provide to the developers. And I'd be very happy if uh, you had some feedback on that and if you have uh, some advices or some critics uh, because I'm trying to make it better. I, I know it's far from being perfect, and, and I need to improve. Uh, so let's go with the presentation. Of course, the first issue, which is the biggest issue, is to find people to work with us. Uh, we've been working with a lot of people from everywhere in the world. We've been working with people uh, in India, in Ukraine. Uh, we've been working with people in, in Bolivia right now, with people uh, in France as well. And it's very challenging because um, you will find a lot of uh, candidates, but it's very hard to identify as a good person. And then you start working with them, and sometimes you have surprises. Uh, so that's the, the key, honestly, the biggest challenge. Uh, so what we try to do is to talk a lot with them and, and try to see the background. Uh, the problem is that in the freelance market, you have a lot of people uh, that would I wouldn't say lie to you, but you know, present themselves in a good way. And they will tell you they can do anything and they have a lot of experience, uh, but they don't. Uh, so we had some misadventures like this, uh, but we are learning. Uh, so we also had uh, very good successes, and that's why we got our, how we got our first extensions. And that's how we can get this uh, uh, user friendly experience. Uh, so we have uh, different sources where uh, we're trying to look for uh, developers. The first obvious source is universities. 
because you have a lot of students that are only, let's say, studying uh, 20 hours a week and they're trying uh, uh, to find some, you know, side jobs or, or things to do uh, after classes. Uh, uh, so that's a, a good source. The problem is usually students don't have much experience. Uh, and sometimes you find students that have a lot. So you have, you know, to be lucky and keep looking, basically. Uh, we also try websites uh, that you probably know, like Julancers or uh, Freelance.com and these kind of websites. And, and then the ideal uh, profile to us is the developer that is already a consultant for a company, but that is willing to make um, extra work on the side and, and you know, uh, uh, give us a few hours of his time every week to work with us and, and develop with us. So what infrastructure am I trying to provide them with? Uh, basically, we need a forge. We need to get organized. Uh, I need Xavier and Tristan to be able to uh, break down all the work in pieces, um, provide screenshot mockups on everything. So we need a forge. Uh, so currently, we are using Redmine, uh, which is free and lightweight. So I kind of like it. But maybe we can find something better. I don't know what you guys are using. Uh, we also are trying to make the developers work on our own, very own source, uh, source control. Because I want to be able, you know, uh, to check and to control what they upload and how they work on the, on, on the component. Because one of the very first components we did, uh, we received the code um, after several weeks. And the guy had worked very, very fast, but it was a nightmare because the, the code is, I don't know, there is no word to describe that. <laughs> That's one of, of the worst experience at any way it's working. So now we're trying uh, to make the developers working uh, di uh, directly on our source control. And my idea is to have uh, some sort of continuous integration. So um, every night the developer uh, must send me his code, must commit the code on the SVN, and I would have some scripts to install it on test tenants. And we would be able you know, uh, to browse our test tenants at any time and to have the, the last version, the most up to date. So I'm also trying. Uh, uh, to provide them if they want to use them a, a few scripts, you know, to uh, automatically package and do some uh, uh, checks on the files and, and stuff like that. I'm giving them the testing and, you know, on several versions uh, of Joomla because it's very important to us uh, to stay compatible with 2.5 and 3.1. Uh, we also have a, a Windows Server testing and it, it's very important sometimes because we have uh, some extensions dealing with, you know, with background codes and stuff like that, and we want to keep them running and, and all the available configurations. And I'm also trying uh, to gather a lot of um, some kind of back practice guide and, and some guidelines uh, to, make their, to make our workflow more efficient because we need, we need to uh, communicate a lot and we need uh, uh, to be able to provide the first implementation to Xavier and Tristan and get some feedback and modify the work. So it's kind of... Uh, mini version of Agile, I'd say. So, like that's another matter. Uh, we would get a developer willing to work with us, interested by those models, so it's grand, it, it's good, so we start working with him. And sometimes we would find out, although he told us he had done a thousand projects with Joomla that he has never used it ever. Uh, so sometimes we need like, to give them a hand to uh, explain them a few things, uh, correct them in how they implement the stuff. Uh, like uh, um, the very first developer uh, was not very uh, used to the MVC model, so uh, you have you know, to provide some assistance. And sometimes you get very lucky and you find the perfect developer and he doesn't need you at all, which makes it difficult as well because he won't be talking to you. you know? Since he never has any problem, he won't ask you questions, so you basically have not much control of what he's doing. Uh, which I don't like as well, but I don't like much things. Uh, I'm trying to do a, a few code reviews as well uh, to keep control on the code base and to make sure uh, uh, no vulnerabilities are uh, embedded in the code. Uh, you don't want to jeopardize uh, your customer's installation. And since uh, you're responsible for the extension, uh, you don't want it to be, well, you want to know what's inside. Uh, I've seen uh, recently an article about uh, some extensions that ended up in the JED. Uh, and that would call, you know, a hidden web frame and, uh, and do weird stuff uh, to increase the SEO rankings of some websites. So I definitely don't want 
uh, one of my developers to put this kind of code uh, to make his site better, let's say, or I don't know. Uh, so we need to, to do some reviews on that. And I also do a lot of testing because, uh, you know, developers are always telling you, yeah, it works. And <laughs> when you try the extension, uh, yeah, <laughs> you, you can have some surprises. So uh, I'm double, you know, I'm doing some other testing and coming back to them. And that's the final touch, let's say, um, sometimes the developer will tell us, yes, I will develop for you, but then I won't be maintaining the code, I won't be maintaining the application, so I just hand it to you and, and, and you forget about me. Uh, so I would try, you know, to anticipate a little bit uh, all the maintenance and all the support. So I would, uh, uh, you know, add some debug traces and, and, and stuff uh, to be able to debug uh, more easily in the end. Uh, uh, even to get, because sometimes on some configuration, some customers, you get weird behavior. Um, and just by going to the back end and looking at the traces, you can, uh, you know, straight, straight away find what's going wrong. And you can, sometimes it's just a misconfiguration, so you can correct it without having to do a backup, a debug, or anything like this. So you, you gain time. And I'm also uh, yeah, controlling uh, all the libraries. Uh, used by the extensions because some developers are still uh, uh, sticking to Joomla.15, for instance, and uh, you don't want them to use uh, deprecated libraries or stuff like that that you will never be able to migrate to uh, future versions of Joomla. And I already talked about security, but uh, uh, of course I don't want them to introduce any uh, vulnerability. So uh, then we would uh, put the extension in the JED and we will try to get as much feedback as we, as we can because, um, yeah, it's always working on the test tenants, but some customers, I don't know how they manage that. Like sometimes I've seen people with 100 extensions installed uh, and you get uh, weird behaviors uh, and you would try stuff you have never thought your extension could be used for. Uh, so you're trying, uh, you know, uh, to provide support to people. So you would ask them for feedback and they would open tickets, thousands of tickets. And, and we would, uh, you know, do all the customer support, basically. So if you want to go to the next slide. So here, yeah, that's our uh, support model. So I'd be very interesting to discuss that if anyone has uh, suggestions about that. Uh, basically, we have a, a few extensions right now, not, not many, but we are uh, increasing. And, and we need to uh, anticipate that. Uh, because we had problem in, in the first time. In the first time, we tried to do everything uh, by ourselves. Uh, uh, and let's say we would uh, assign all the tickets to the developer, which is a nightmare, because you have uh, people asking always the same question, you know, the questions that are already in the FAQs, but they wouldn't read them. Uh, so right now, uh, we have uh, one other member of the team that's taking care of all this uh, first layer of support. So every time someone opens a ticket, he would take it, it would be assigned to him. He would take it, try to look if it's a recurring problem, something we already know, if there's something we can do. And then he would assign to the developer only in the last um, resort, you know, when there is no other option. And he would uh, do all the work, you know, he, even if we need access to the back end of the customer and stuff like that, he would ask for it. And uh, the problem with that, it, it quickly overwhelming because you're basically trying to respond to the issues on the flow. Um, like let's say you would get a ticket and, and, and in the evening I would connect and I would review all the tickets and try to provide a fix ASAP because we're trying to keep the customers happy. Uh, so you basically work fast and you know when you're developing something and working fast, it's not usually very good. And, and like it's overwhelming because you have a lot of tickets to handle and you have to handle them quick and people are sometimes aggressive and they want, you know, fast answers. Um, so I don't know, I don't know if, I'm not sure this is a perfect model, but uh, we know it's good customer wise because we have good feedback on the feedback, so it's good. Uh, people are telling us they are happy with the support we provide them, but it's a, a, little, bit, a little bit tough for us. Do we have a, uh, a last slide now? <laughs> okay, the Q and A. Uh, yeah, so I hope you, by any chance, you'd have any, you know, question, suggestion, anything uh, that could help us. Because uh, we are not here uh, to present uh, any good model or, or any 
perfect ID because uh, nothing is perfect. Uh, just trying, you know, uh, to make things better. I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with the extension process. Uh, so, uh, how guys do you do it? <laughs> no suggestion. Like, for instance, I, I don't know what is. Uh, what would you think about the support model? Like, like uh, we have currently our SLA is uh, 48 hours, uh, which is quite tough. It's basically it's to let the weekend go, and, and to be uh, not to be too busy in the weekend. Um, uh, but I don't know. We, would we lose a lot of, of customers if we had a, a, an SLA of 96 hours? You don't look very inspired. We, we usually go under 12. Under 12. Yeah, that's why we got that guy uh, working with yeah, us. So yeah. Like two hours, four hours, ten hours, something okay. like that. Okay. Because if you if you wait twenty four hours for just saying I write it. Yeah, people get mad. That's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. So the fast stuff. Yeah, yeah, even if you solve the problem in forty eight hours, that's okay. But mm -hmm. you keep him up to date. Yeah. And he's very happy because he feels like you are caring for him, mm -hmm. even if you actually solve the problem. Okay. Yeah, we Okay. Okay, yeah, no, it's definitely a good idea. Uh, yeah, we got uh, another guy to uh, work on that, so he does all the pre answering. So he's working seven days a week, I think, uh, for us. And not full time, thank God, we don't have that many bugs. <laughs> uh, uh, but he will probably someday as we increase the number of extensions. Uh, but yeah, so he tries to answer. So the I'd say the delay would be eight hours or ten hours, yeah. uh, and then we try. When it's technical, we try to do it uh, faster. But for instance, like if it is a recurring problem, he would answer straight away in, in four hours, and then the customer would answer back, and he would be able to bounce uh, like in the same day. Uh, uh, but yeah, I think you're definitely right with that. It's very important to at least act as we care. <laughs> Okay. And and what about uh, I don't know like maybe you all have a. Ah oh, pardon, sorry. Yeah. yeah. What do you use for packaging? Yeah. Well, I just wrote a, a custom script that would do uh, some a little some checks before, so that but it's very it's very basic right now. So I'm trying I'm willing to make it better, but right now what it does. It basically grabs the files, uh, checks there is no PHP syntax error that would you know crash your Joomla website. Then it will, it's going to uh, write the version number in all the XML files, and it's gonna upload the extension on a Joomla tenant. On the what this is based PHP? Yeah, yeah. But I'm willing to do uh, something better, but it's gonna take me time. No, no, to my test tenants, you know, it's uh, it's to be sure, you know, the installation process goes through because I, I want to be sure I'm doing an install each time because it happened to me at the very beginning. Uh, uh, I was working on an extension and I corrected a bug, but I broke the install. But you can see it if you're, uh, you know, directly debugging on your on your website because it's working, just the install not working. So I want to do an install every time I package my extension. extension to keep uh, a very user-friendly extension because the risk is, is, is not in fact at the beginning because in, uh, at the beginning you have a complete mock-up for example on the video you see that uh, the image we, uh, we uh, the image uh, managing uh, manager extension sorry um, we built a complete mock-up at the beginning but uh, the, um, what is hard is to keep it simple in the time because sometimes people, oh, I want uh, to have a configuration uh, about the size on the single image and uh, and change and uh, and share it on Facebook and 
the user experience can change in uh, one or two versions if you had uh, like five buttons uh, to share on Facebook and stuff like that. And we always <coughs> want to control. That's why when uh, it's automatic package, uh, we have it on the live website and we can control if uh, everything is okay for a uh, for, uh, final user too. Yeah, it's uploaded on, on the test website and we can all access. So then we have instant control, like all of us, and we can validate things like that. Um, that's also a, a question I have actually, uh, like because you were mentioning people asking for a feature request or feature changes. Um, people have been asking me on an extension to uh, completely redesign, uh, for instance, the layout. And, and I've been a little bit reluctant because I know a lot of people are going to update and I'm going to break their, com their whole layout. Mm -hmm. And he told me, oh, you shouldn't care about that. People will take care about that. Like, well, what do you think? So would you do it? I wouldn't. Okay. Yeah, I could. Okay, yeah, I could rebuild a complete new one. Okay, no, I see the idea. Okay, good. Yeah, it's actually smart. Why do you use SVN instead of Vue? Because I'm old school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I'm, I'll be moving to that. Yeah. Right, what n right now, um, mostly we have one developer for one extension, so it's no big deal right now. But yeah, it's true, it's better. So we're going to move no, to I that e eventually. Before, you know, the, he is working, but the code base is ours. So he's working on our code base. If you work with Git, uh, you go with forks and pull requests and whatever. Uh, that will save you a lot of problems with that kind of code base. OK, yeah. You could have his own code base and then pull requests to you, and you can keep track of what is changing and merge, do git flow, so feature, branch for the feature, uh, keep developing the feature, then bug fixing. You know, a lot of people here probably use git flow mm -hmm. for developing extensions. So uh, that will keep stable and clean also for the UI mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Into okay. That. OK, yeah, no, I'm definitely planning on moving uh, uh, to, to git. And, uh, Anytime soon, like uh, tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> 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 sure. Well. And the thing is, if you move to Git, then it's easier to do the automatic Git flow. Is uh, I was working on a um, automatic deployer, so you have this Git repository, and when you push, it will do a hook for automatically deploying that on the test website. So every time a developer pushes a new uh, feature on the, on the master branch the master. or, or the, that particular tag, it will push to the test website. So you don't have to build the extension. It will just fly over. And, and the same thing you can do for the packaging. When you tag, you can build the extension. Or you can generate each time you do it. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. No problem. What if you have database change in your extension? What if what? That change? Database, you have a change in your database and it needs to be tested. Because they need to test it with the new upgrade, updated, sorry. Uh, yeah, I would write the update before repackaging it. Like I would, I would put the SQL file and, and I would send it. Uh, but yeah, it can be, yeah, you can have surprises. Uh, uh, if this is a work in progress, you know, uh, uh, you do first the update and then you break something. So yeah, you have to uh, do a fine. But usually before resending the extensions to the customers, uh, I would uh, start on fresh tenants where the extension has never been installed. And I would install it for the first time to see what a first time installation looks like. Because we have we had some problems like this uh, uh, where the update of the extension worked, but not the first install. So well, you basically have to keep control of any scenario. Um, yeah, we had that, it was very weird, but basically the installer was failing. But if you retry to install, that was working because that was just something that would be executed the only, the very first time you would put it. But yeah, no, you basically have to start on fresh installations to see what it looks like. I had another question. Uh, right now we're using Redmine. Uh, which is good, but like I don't like the idea of having uh, you know to uh, uh, maintain the server myself. 
Uh, and I've been looking at, at um, you know, cloud platforms to replace it. Um, I've been working a little bit with Assembla a few years ago, but uh, I, I don't know, like, is there anything you would recommend? I see you're <laughs> reacting. Don't go with Assembla. Okay. Uh, I was speaking with Nicholas before, and he's switching to GitHub. GitHub, okay. Um, This is my experience. So I had a pretty bad experience with GitHub uh, in yeah. terms of <laughs> private. You know, if you're public, it's okay. If you want private repository and they keep mm -hmm. managing yeah. private code, the issue management is just uh, that's too simplistic. I mean, you probably have. Yes, yeah, that's what I'm concerned uh, about GitHub actually. It's more, it's more the user, you know, the user management, the ability. Some people, you, you, you need to have access Change. to the repository if to, to handle issues, for instance, which is an issue. So you, know, uh, you might I want to use GitHub just for that reason. Because okay. it's easy for private, you can do private repository, it's easy to play. Uh, and you can create teams that only uh, have pull request access. So you, they can actually touch your code, but they can fork change and pull request. So you can ev evaluate what they did and went back. Uh, and then you can integrate with continuous uh, integration systems. <coughs> uh, but if you go further than that, you need to have people to have access to issues and nothing else. Not especially not the uh, code. Okay. No, which, is, which, is the issue, issues. which is the issue, which is the reason for the Joomla project. Yeah, yeah, I, project I don't have that kind of huge. Yeah. But there are also other suppliers of Git. So yeah. you need to be too. There's Jira also. Uh, as a Bitbucket, it's no, Bitbucket has the same issue. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's, it's the same, same, yeah. same system, right? Yeah. So yeah. The reason we move to Jira, because Jira are more complicated. Jira, yeah. I use, a small, I use yeah. a small US company called Repository Hosting, and they, uh, they are track based. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can try the new one, uh, Git. Git. Uh, the, it's an open solution of Git, like GitHub. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, good to know. I'll definitely look into that because yeah. I'm willing to move uh, from so that. It depends on your needs. Uh, from my needs, I find with GitHub. But it's true that if you have either too many extensions or too complicated task issues management, mm -hmm. then it can be tricky. Uh, because uh, you create per appointment. So if you have 100 extensions, mm. Yeah, it's going to get expensive, yeah. Uh, we, we are like 25, and we are reaching like 100 per month, mm. uh, which is still manageable, but mm. our cheaper solution. OK. OK, good to know. And the last uh, thing I, I would have liked to discuss, I don't know if you confront to this, is uh, uh, regarding finding people to work with. Uh, that's pretty hard, and you basically barely no control on who you are working with. Uh, so you basically have to uh, experiment and break your teeth. Uh, any tips, any hint, any thing? You can find them on Java. On? <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. yeah, so if anyone is willing to work with us, <laughs> come and talk to us, of course. That's, no, that's what was on the go one of the goals of this presentation, of course. Um, but if you, know, if you have any tips on, on well, I'm sure if you have any tips on how to find the perfect developers, you might not. Share them. Share them with me. Well, thank you very much thank for your you. time.